In this video, I want to introduce you to Aphorai, who is also the sponsor of today's video. Aphorai is essentially like having a Zotero and a ChatGPT together where you can annotate on PDFs and organize it with a very, very similar setup to Zotero. Before I jump into showing you Aphorai, I do want to let you know that there is a link in the description below and there is also a discount code you can use to get 10% off if you're interested in upgrading to one of their paid plans. The nice thing is they do have a free plan. If you're not wanting to use a lot of the AI features, you can definitely use the free plan and get a lot of these benefits. If you are going to be more heavy on the AI, you can use one of the paid plans and you can get 10% off with the discount code below. So you can see here, this is my AFRI and you can see that I've already been working in it to work on different projects that I'm currently on. But I'm going to create a new collection specifically for you to see here. So I'm going to click up here and then I can click create folder to create a new collection. And then I'm going to call this. So I'm naming this caffeine and performance. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to import one of my Zotero libraries to work with. So to do that, I can click import items and then I'm going to add to click to add my bib text file. And so what it's going to do, and this is one of the features I really like about it, is it's automatically going to look and try and find the PDF for you. So these didn't have the PDFs in them, they're a bib text file, they can't hold that data within them, but it went and looked online to try and see if they could find the PDFs for them. And then you can see there were three that it wasn't able to find the PDF. And so what I can do is if I have the PDF, I can click this button here and it will allow me to upload the PDF for it so that it can process in. If it doesn't, if it can't find the PDF, then it won't upload it into the system. And then I can click upload. And so you can see that it's now uploaded in the ones that had a PDF or it was able to find a PDF for them. So within here, this is a really similar view to Zotero if you're familiar with Zotero. So if I click on one, you can see I have the info, I have the citation information in here, I have the notes for it, and then I have the ability to view the file. I can also search up here. So with this one, it won't, if you search up here, it won't specifically search the PDFs, but it will search the title, the abstract, and the notes that you have as well. And one of the things that I really like about this is that you can view the file and they essentially have this nice PDF reader that you can use to annotate and do all of these different things on it. So if I click view file, it opens up in a new tab, the PDF, for that specific reference. And we have a few things up here. So we can zoom in and out, we can rotate left or right, we can go to different pages, and then we have a few annotation tools. So we have the, the ability to set the highlight color, the ability to toggle on and off highlight. One of the things that's really nice about this is it does have those keyboard shortcuts for these. So if we hold S and T together, we'll get highlight. We hold S and A together, we'll get an area highlight, which is basically a box that you can do. And if you hold S and N together, you can do a sticky note. I can also come over here and I can just write in quick notes as I'm doing it. I don't have to add the notes into here. I can just write in notes here. And this is actually the first place that I'm going to show you that has the AI built in. So what you can do is you can actually do at and you can choose the model that you want to work with. So for this, I'm just gonna choose GPT-40, and then I can type in my question. So I can say something like, summarize this paper. And so what it's going to do is it automatically adds that as a note, and then if I click here, you can see it actually brings up the comment under it. So you have um, the information in it, the key points, that are in it as well. And then this paper concludes that while the data available is promising, further research is warranted to fully understand the potential benefits. And so if we kind of scroll down to the conclusion, we can see that basically they are saying what they said. It's, it is effective um, and that there are um, at least three main gaps to um, continue to pursue. And then we can analyze um, the summary there. The other things we can do, so we can chat within there, but we can also do things like highlighting. So I'm going to hold S and T on my 
keyboard and you see that that highlight changed. So I'll do it again. But you can see that it's unselected. If I hold S and T, it automatically selects it. This is something I really like because it means I don't have to keep clicking around in order to do all of the different things I need to do. And then I can go ahead and highlight part of my text. The thing that I really like about this, and I like it a lot better than Zotero's way of doing this, is that it automatically includes that highlight into the notes. So you can see that highlight is here, and then I can write in here, in here a comment. So like if I wanted to highlight something and take notes on it, I can do that. And so now that note appears in here. So if I go back into my library, and I click on um, my creatine and I go to the notes, you can see both of those notes now appear in here and I can easily see the information from both the chat and from my highlights and my comments on those highlights. I can also do an area highlight. So I can click the area highlight and if I just drag and drop and let's say I include all of that, you can see it now pulls it in as an image. So it's not exactly going to be searchable. It takes an image of it and includes it within the note. And if I do S in, I can create a sticky note. So if I come down here, maybe I want to create a sticky note on this. And let's say I'm going to do, let's do another AI chat. So we're going to go to the same one. And we're going to do, can you explain the blood brain barrier? and why it is important for creatinine supplementation. Okay. So basically asking it to explain something. And so we can see it's included there and it's also included here. And now we get the response as well. So it talks about the transporters for it, the endogenous synthesis, and different things like that that we can easily get that's both stored within this paper, but it's also accessible. So now if I took something like GAA and I search for it, it's going to bring this one up because it has a note that's associated with it, even though that note came from an AI bot. And this is something that I think a lot of people haven't implemented in is the ability to search AI results, um, which is included in here. And you can see that those two notes aren't showing up here. And the reason for that is it just needs a refresh. So if I go to my citation and go back to my notes, you see that they're now showing up the two that I just did there. And so that's the way to interact with the AI within a specific PDF. You can take notes on it, you can write comments on it, all of these things are available. And I think the way that they have done it is really nice. You can also sort these notes and filter them. So if I just wanna see what my text highlights are, that's there. If I just wanna see what my quick notes are, which are the ones that I just type into the bar, um, it's the ones that I type in down here. So they're, they're not on the actual page, they're just um, within the notes section. I can specify to those, I can specify to my sticky notes, I can specify to all of this, and I can also organize them as well. The other thing very similar to Zotero is it does have tags, and you can always click over here to see all the keyboard shortcuts, and you can see that to create a shortcut you can do CT, and so if I hold down C and T, you can see a tag pops up here, and I can just type in creatine and drag and drop it. And now this, you can see it has a dot here and it also um, is now going to have that tag there. And so that's essentially ways you can do it. You can also add in the tags here. The other part of Afri that I think is really cool is the fact that they have an AI research assistant and so within here, there's basically three different modes that you can use. There is the document retrieval mode, which means you can hook it up to one of your libraries or multiple libraries and have it pull in to give you results on it. There's the semantic scholar mode. So this could be like things that you haven't even started developing papers on. Um, but if I just did semantic scholar mode, then I'm going to pull in the papers from semantic scholar. And then there's Google search mode. So if you just want to use Google search, you can use that mode as well. So the first mode I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add in Semantic Scholar and I'm going to ask it what is the best level of supplementation of creatine for 
bodybuilders. And I can send that. So what we get is we get information and what we also get is references. So this pulled three different papers um, and then it summarized those papers together. So it talked about for muscle growth, creatine supplement supplementation for brain health, and then physical exercise and oxidative stress markers. Then it talks about the dosage that they, um, those papers discussed, and then timing and consistency. So if we click on these, we can click um, visit site and this will take us to the Semantic Scholar site. And we can also click on upload URL and that will actually upload it into our um, library. So if we go back to our library, you can see that in unsorted, it's added this in. So now we can drag and drop it into our new library here. And so that's the way to automatically pull it in. I do believe that is a pro feature. So that's one of the paid features if you're interested in being able to directly pull in from Semantic Scholar. So if we go back to our research assistant, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch it to document retrieval. And when I do that, I'm gonna first use connect files. So this allows you to control which files it pulls in and reads to give you the results. So if I click connect files, this is already set to my caffeine and performance, which is exactly what I want it to be set to. If it wasn't, then I would need to um, set it, obviously click the check mark there to uh, set it to that. So I'm gonna click confirm. And now I can say, how does creatine supplementation affect muscle growth? And hit send. So once it reads the different papers, you can see up here it was reading the papers. It basically gives you a few different things. So it talks about the mechanism of action, muscle creatine levels, muscle mass and function, and then dosage strategies. And you can see it gives us all of the um, citations that it pulled the data from there. And so if I click this, you can see I can go straight from here to view file and go ahead and confirm that information. Um, and then it gives me the like abstract down there. So I can always click here and go ahead and view the file. This will bring it up over here and this allows me to be able to determine if this is actually what it said and read further about whether I want to further investigate this as well. And if you open up the bottom, you can actually get be able to copy this. You can copy it with the citations or without the citations and be able to paste it somewhere else or you can regenerate the answer. Both of those are good options um, if you need to use either of that. So that's really two different ways that you can use this research assistant. You can use it to first start out and pull things in from something like Semantic Scholar. And then you can also use it to summarize or ask questions about the references that are already within your own libraries. You can always go back and go into the individual ones to be able to add in those comments or chat with one um, PDF specifically. Now you can also export your items. So let's say you added a bunch of items into this and then you want to export it out for citations or something like that with Zotero. If you want to just export a collection, you can right click on any collection and you can export those citations. And so you can export it as a bib text, a bibla text, a bib text, an RIS or a CFF file. And so I, any of those Zotero will take in. And so you can do that. You can also download the files generate the citations. You can come from a specific one and use with AI that'll use the document retrieval function there. Um, and then you can always rename, create a subfolder under that. So if you wanna have multiple subfolders like you do in Zotero, you can also do that. Um, you can move it to a different folder and then obviously delete the folder and delete the folder and the files in it. You do have a trash as well. So whenever you go to delete things, if I click move to trash, if I click this one, move to trash, it'll go into your trash so it won't automatically delete it. And then to empty your trash, you do have to click and hold. If you just click once, it won't do anything. If you are interested in signing up for FRI, I will have a link in the description below. And there is also a discount code. I will leave it on the screen now so that you can use that to also get 10% off if you're interested. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.